This is the all-new VW Amarok, the Volkswagen pickup in the next generation. So far it has been on the market since 2010 in the previous generation. Now finally the new generation with the bold styling, angular front and in the rear. I would actually say inspired a little bit by American pickup trucks. Or what do you think? Tell me your opinion in the comments. So far we have two versions here for you today. The two top trim levels, the Aventura and the Panamericana. But of course there will also be low trims and middle trim levels. In this video we're going to tell you all about you need to know on exterior and interior, all the different features and of course the technical details, all the facts and figures you need to know about the all new VW Amarok here on Autogo Fuel with Thomas. Let's go. In the front we can see LED lamps, standard now, optional the IQ light, these are the matrix LED lights. And there will be a double cap version, the one you can see here now with four doors, but also a single cap version with two doors. They are different than in the loading area and of course also how many passengers it can house. Wheels start from 16 inch and go up to 18 inch for all terrain tires or even up to 21 inch for normal tires. The double cap with the four doors can house one Euro pallet on the loading area and the single cap will house two Euro pallets. Indeed, the difference is the length of the bed. With the double cap, it's 1.5 meters or 60 inches in length, 1.2 meters in width, same width for the single cap, but then 2.3 meters or 90 inches. Towing capacity up to 3.5 tons depends on the engine. The payload at around 1.2 tons and what you can directly put on the loading area is 500 kilograms. Even more interesting, you can also put a roof tent on this pickup truck. Actually then the weight you can put on there is 350 kilograms. That might for example be a tent for at least two they claim even for four persons, of course, always depending on the weight. The overall length is increased now at 5 meters 35 or 211 inches. That means 10 centimeters or 4 inches longer. And even more interesting, the wheelbase increases by 17 centimeters or 7 inches. So longer wheelbase or even more wheelbase than length increase. And that means shorter overhangs and also more legroom in the rear, especially than for the double cap version. The shorter overhangs also lead to better approaching angles, 29 degrees in the front, the descending angle is now at 21 degrees, and more off-road features or effects, 80 centimeters waiting depth, now a massive increase, now at 31 inches. Well, I think the styling works very well, especially at the rear with these lamps, and yeah, once again, I think really inspired by Ford pickup trucks. And um, I mean, they are also working together, right? You know, especially in the commercial vehicle segment. Let's see <laughs> if this has anything to do with that. But definitely the Amarok has been very well received in styling. And I think this will continue right here, especially also with these trespiece style wheel arches that has also been one of the characteristic elements. On the interior, all new, really nothing to do with the previous generation. We can see this vertical layout of the screen and the digital instruments, always digital on the left, either eight inch or optional, what you can see here, 12 inch. You can also see when you pick the different driving modes that you can see them on the digital instruments. This will be very interesting. More driving modes and also a lot of assistance systems here for this pickup truck. For this small pickup truck, you have to say, of course, the American sizes are always even larger, but it will be rather like a normal passenger car as for the drivability and the assistance systems. On the right side, the infotainment comes in 10 inch or optional 12 inch, the bigger one you can see right here. And also this vertical layout, I think even more inspired by American pickup trucks, isn't it? Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is standard equipment. There will also be a Harman Kardon sound system available. I would really be looking forward to that. As for the seating materials, they claim that they have worked on the ergonomics of the base seat itself. And then the lower trim levels will probably come with fabric seats. Have no exact info on that yet. The style trim level will come with microfiber seat. They call it Art Velour. 
However, the Panamericana and Aventura here, the top two trim levels, they will feature animal skin seats. And I mean, by a car that is newly released in 2022, that's of course disappointing. As for engines, yeah, they haven't announced an all-electric version, which is disappointing as well. They would rather go with the classic 2-liter TDI. Yeah, we all know that engine. 150 horsepower, 170 or 204, the latter than with the bi-turbo, the other one single turbo, and also a 3-liter V6 TDI with 250 horsepower. And on the petrol side, a 2.3-liter TSI, 4-cylinder, with around 300 horsepower, and the two bigger engines or the most <laughs> horsepower intense engines so the 3 liter v6 tdi or the 2.3 liter tsi these two will feature permanent all-wheel drive the other one have all-wheel drive on demand so you either have rear-wheel drive or you connect it then for the all-wheel drive the higher horsepower versions will also feature a 10-speed automatic gearbox there will also be other automatic gearbox available for the lower horsepower spec versions and also manual gearbox versions for more off-roading, you can also use the transfer box. So what else can we see, for example, in the interior? It seems like they're using the mix of screens and digital controls, but also still a lot of real buttons and things you can really turn and press. And I think that's actually a good decision. Also, when you, for example, take a glimpse at the steering wheel and so on. So they represent as a mix of <laughs> you know, capacitive fields and real buttons. So I think in that case, they went for a good decision. Overall, it seems, you know, some people thought the pickup segment would be dead, especially in Europe, for example. They're going to revive that now. Of course, we all know that in America, in the US, it's, you know, one of the pop most popular segments still. They will not release the Amarok in America as far as the plans go at this moment. It's supposed to be for Europe, for Africa, it's also built in South Africa, and also for the Australian and the New Zealand market, for example. And it is actually, well, built in South Africa, but they say that it's developed in Germany and Australia, so Australia will also be a focal market. So tell me what you think about the all-new VW Amarok. Looking forward to your comments.